What's up? Welcome back. We are building out a bookmark tool for interacting with the Twitter V2 API. We're building this with Ruby on Rails. In uh, We've already covered how we authenticate with Twitter. We built a little Twitter client to interact with the API. And in this episode, we're going to go through and build out a UI that's going to show us all of our bookmarks. And if we have time, we'll also build out some smart folders based on these context annotations. So right now, we're just kind of dumping all the JSON on the page. But what we want to do is like actually iterate over these bookmarks and have them show up. We also want to clean this up. We're using Tailwind today. So let's actually first jump into application HTML ERB. And what I want to do is just give this some breathing room. And I've been using Tailwind UI a ton. I know it's a crutch. Before this, I used Bootstrap. Whatever, don't judge. It makes it look so nice and I, uh, <laughs> it's just so simple. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at some page layouts here. What I really want is just like some spacing layouts. Um, so we have, oh gosh, I really just care about the spacing. There we go. Layout containers. So I want a container and I want it to be narrow so that it kind of looks a little bit like um, Twitter. So I'm just going to grab that and then drop that into my application HTML ERB, which is the template. So I'm going to say yield here. That's where our content is going. Now, if we head back, we'll notice that it's already sort of changed the page and our stuff is at least showing up a little bit closer to the middle. So let's go to our bookmarks uh, index.html. I'm going to use class text large and font bold for our bookmark header. And what else do we want to do? I guess we want to iterate over um, all of these bookmarks. So right now, you'll notice that if you look at the JSON, um, right at the top, we have data. So there's an object that has the key data that points at an array. And closer to the bottom, this is where data ends. And there's another key includes that points at an object that includes users and some other things. So what I want to do is actually go to my bookmarks controller and pull out the bookmarks from just that data blob. So here I'm going to say something like, I don't know, um, like bookmark, uh, bookmarks is client bookmarks. And then I'm going to say my bookmarks are actually like this bookmarks data. And what that'll let me do is go back to my index page and iterate over some bookmarks. So I'm going to say something like at bookmarks each do mark. And now I can say, let's print out that mark. If we remove our pre-tag for just a second and come back here and refresh the page. Now we're printing out just the raw sort of hashes for the bookmarks. We see the author ID, we see the context annotations and more. Printed out, but it's kind of hard to read. So let's do, let's add just like some BRs in here so we can get a little bit more, um, make it a little bit easier to tell what's actually being spit out. So that is like the bookmark there, has the author ID, the created at and some text. So I think what we want to do is I want to actually just grab some section from Tailwind UI that's going to give us like a little blob. Um, I don't know, some sort of like thing that's going to spit out some some media objects. Yeah, media object. That seems good. OK, maybe it looks like um, wide responsive, basic responsive, media right, stretch to fit, align to bottom, align to center, basic. Um, I think maybe we can just go with the basic one. OK. So we're going to drop that in as like what we show for each of the marks. We don't need an SVG, but what, in, what we're going to do instead is use an image tag with the source being the author's, um, the author's profile image URL. So where do we get that? The alt is going to be something like the author name um, photo or maybe like a photo of that person photo of so and so. Um, OK, so in order to get out the author, when we were looking back at the raw text here, we don't actually see the author. We just see the author ID. So if we look at Mark right now, the Mark has the maybe we do Mark keys. The mark has the ID, context annotation, text, and author ID, but it doesn't have anything about the author. So um, instead, what we want to do is back in our bookmarks controller, 
we want to pull out the authors from bookmarks also. So we want to say something like uh, authors is a dictionary. In fact, like, let me show you what, I, uh, what I'm looking at here. So if we say underscore bookmarks um, includes, that's going to give us back a list of the author or the list of the users, right? So includes users, that is a, an array. And inside of that array is a bunch of objects where it has the name, the ID, username, etc. What I want to do is to make it a, um, a constant time lookup of the author. I want to create a mapping of the author ID to the author object. So the way that it stands right now, if I just had the ID and I needed to look up an author, I would need to iterate over all of the objects in this array or in this list. And that would be sort of like a linear time lookup in order to find the author. So to make it a little bit faster, I'm going to um, reorganize the data structure into a hash where this is going to be like the ID of the author points at the author data. Okay, so the way we're going to get that is say bookmarks uh, includes users dot each do user. And we're going to say at authors for user at ID is equal to user. I think this is going to give us what we want. So we can do this binding dot pry trick again, refresh the page. And we should now see at authors being a dictionary of author ID points at and then the object. So that's pretty handy because now when we go back into our view for the uh, bookmarks index here at the very top of our loop or inside of our block for each of our bookmarks, we can create a new variable called author. And this is going to be something like um, at authors at mark of author ID. And that will create this local variable author that we can then use to do other stuff. Oh my gosh, look at that. Holy moly. So it's already got the author's image URL and some lorem ipsum. For a second, I was like, whoa, that, that works so fast because it kind of looks like the thing that we had in the very beginning, right? Um, okay, so let's see here. So we've got, uh, we've got the author's image URL. Is it, does it have the right alt text? Let's take a look. It looks like, yeah, photo of Trixie Mattel. So that is indeed the right alt text that we were hoping for. So that's cool. Um, all right, so now what I wanna do is put the author's name underneath it, we'll put their handle, we'll put the text of the, the mark. So let's put this, let's make this the author's uh, name. We'll make another uh, span class. I don't know what's gonna be in there. Uh, author, like I think it's their, username or something. And then here we're going to put out the mark text. And when we refresh the page, all right, so now we see their handle. That's cool. We also see the text. This is their name. All right, that's pretty sweet. For the author username though, I want to make this, I actually want to make this a link to their profile on Twitter. So we're going to say something like a, the href is going to be twitter.com slash and then the author username. I believe that should work in most cases. And then here we'll just put an at sign before it so that it looks twittery. And we probably want this to have the class of like underline so that it looks like a link. All right, now if we click on it, we're brought to their page. We probably also wanna do like the, um, that whole thing where we don't, uh, let's see, target. Um, there's like a whole bunch of uh, best practices here around um, not having uh, followers and whatever, like no rel, no follow, et cetera, et cetera. But this is a good start. Okay. So we have all these BRs. That's not really a great practice for keeping things organized. So instead we're gonna use Twitter bootstrap, or not Twitter bootstrap. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to use the uh, the built-in tools from Tailwind UI. So we're going to say like, I don't know, PT8 or something. So we get some padding top above each of these. And then let's make bookmarks even larger, like 3XL. And we really want that to be bold and huge. 
And now we have sort of all of our bookmarks here coming out. They look really pretty good. I think the one thing I might change is I want these images that are to the left to look nice like the avatars um, inside of uh, this, you know, uh, Tailwind UI. I keep wanting to say <laughs> Twitter UI. Okay, so image class, this is what we're gonna drop on the image is class is this thing. And now how does it look? Boom, it looks beautiful. Okay, I guess like the one other thing that I wanted to do was uh, know when this thing happened, when this tweet happened. So right below the text, we'll add a span class of like text small. And we're gonna print out the mark created at. So this is like when the bookmark was created. If we refresh the page, we see this timestamp, which kind of looks nasty. There is this really nice helper called time ago in words. And the first time I saw this, my mind was sort of blown. So if you refresh the page here, you will see, I don't know why it sometimes fails, but yeah, now it says about 17 hours. And so that's when it was ago. So let's see, now we have about 17 hours ago. Super cool. I guess we wanna make this a little bit muted too. 400. Okay, nice. So that's now that's like nice and muted. I guess we can maybe make this the handle blue or something. I don't know. This gives us a pretty good breakdown. Okay, so now we are uh, we're rendering a UI that contains our bookmark. So that's fantastic. All right, we are looking good. Let's move on to the next section where we're gonna like build out some folders, which are gonna be smart folders based on the like the context or those like context annotations for each of the bookmarks. So we wanna build some smart folders that are about our bookmarks. Let's also give this a little bit of breathing room. We'll just give this a PT8 also. Um, and our, our, book, or our folders are gonna go in between bookmarks and Trixie Mattel, or like our first uh, bookmarked tweet here. And the bookmarks are gonna look, or I'm sorry, the folders are gonna look something like, um, just maybe like pills or something that you can click on. And the way we're gonna build those is um, we need to kind of like map over and then filter down to a collection of these um, of these folders. So back inside of bookmarks controller, uh, let's see. So binding.pry, uh, let's actually come down here and refresh the page. So at bookmarks, so each of the bookmarks might have this context annotation. So bookmarks.first has a context annotation. So context annotation looks like this. Context annotation, so it's plural. Okay, so it has several. So this is an array and the array has a, each, each context annotation is an object that has a domain and an entity. And so this specific bookmark has two context annotations. One is uh, person Trixie Mattel and the other is entertainment personality Trixie Mattel. So um, what I think we wanna do is iterate over the context annotations and build a mapping of like the combination. So this is this is from the from the demo. They have kind of a breakdown here where they show context annotations. If you if you read through the code, the way that they set this up is they build out the context annotations into a mapping of the folder ID goes to kind of like it's a it uses the ID from the domain and the ID from the entity. Um, so yeah, so here they're they're creating these contexts of like the ID of the domain and the ID of the entity, and then they're using those to sort of filter down some of the tweets in the future. So we're gonna do something very similar. So over inside of our bookmarks controller here, what we wanna do is we're gonna, um, we're gonna create these folders. So um, folders are going to be a, a dictionary again, and this is gonna be of like domain ID colon con, um, what is it? Oh, entity ID points at, and then like, entity.name, something like this, okay? So how do, we, how do we actually get that out? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this up based on 
the bookmark data. So we're going to iterate over the bookmarks. Bookmarks each do mark. And for each bookmark, it might have context annotations. So mark at context annotations. Um, and when I say it might, uh, it's possible that this key is missing. So it's possible that there's a bookmark with no context annotations. I found that there's a few tweets where there was just nothing added to them, in which case we want to use dot fetch so that we can use a, a sensible default because we want to call each and iterate over each of these context annotations. I'm just going to name the variable CA. I know that's too short, but whatever, just go with me. So in order to build our folders, we're going to say at folders at some like, I don't know, let's make a helper method here to get like the key or like context annotation uh, key for CA. So we'll make a method down here, private method. And this is going to return CA at domain um, ID. Uh, and I guess this is going to be a string of these things concatenated um, CA at entity ID. So this kind of just follows the demo pattern. I'm not sure if this is like exactly how I would build it out long term, but um, this gives us something to work with. Okay, and then we're going to set that equal to CA entity uh, name. So if we look back at sort of our crashed thing here, the entity name is going to be, in this case, the entity name would be Trixie Mattel. In this case, it would also be Trixie Mattel. They're going to have different domains, but um, I guess like technically we could have the, the name be like the concatenation of the two. Let's actually, let's, yeah, let's do that. So we're going to have like, the, uh, the domain, we'll make the domain first. CA domain name, and then the entity name, and maybe we'll have like a dash between them. I don't know, let's see what happens here. Okay, we lost our, let's see, uh, binding.pry. Let's just see if folders looks like what we expect. And okay, so. We have our key, which is the entity or the domain with the entity, and then that gives us person dash Trixie Mattel, entertainment personality Trixie Mattel, and then we have entities, entity service, technology, interests and hobbies, category, computer programming. Maybe we don't want maybe we don't want the domain in the name. So let's let's just remove the domain. Let's remove the domain from the name, and we'll just use the entity name. Just it's it's a little bit cleaner and it'll be shorter in the UI. Okay, we'll go back to our bookmarks index, and now we can iterate over folders. So at folders.each do, and this is going to give us like some ID and then the like name or something of the entity. So for now, let's just print those out name. And if we refresh, we, hmm. I was expecting to see some names printed out here. At folders.each do name. At folders. Does that give us anything? Okay. Oh, you know what? Yeah. This should give us the key and value. ID and name. Hmm. Oh, it is. It's working down here. I don't know why it didn't work when I refreshed. Okay. All right. So now we have these names printed out. Let's make these links. So the way the links are going to work is we're going to have um, a, we're going to allow the bookmarks page to accept a query string parameter and use that to filter the bookmarks. So here we'll say something like, uh, this is going to be um, an href with bookmarks question mark folder is equal to the ID. And that should give us a bunch of links. And they are links, we just can't see them because by default, Tailwind doesn't make them uh, underline. All right, so now if we click on technology, now at the top, you'll notice that we have folder and then it has sort of the ID of the domain and the ID of the entity. 
So we can then use that to filter down. But let's make this look a little bit cleaner. So we can go back over to Tailwind UI, search for badges and the badges. I don't know, these ones look pretty nice. Let's look at the, I don't know. I like the green one. Um, we could probably make it so that like whatever the current folder is, is like a certain color or whatever. I don't know, um, whatever. For now, let's just see how this looks. Oh gosh, that looks so cool. But I think green is too much. Let's try gray. Um, all right, and then text gray. Oh, that looks so cool. Okay, so if we click on Stripe, it should only show us. Oh, right, now we have to implement that. So we have to implement the filtering based on the folder that was selected. So we're gonna go back to our bookmarks controller. And here at the bottom, we wanna say something like, uh, bookmarks is bookmarks dot filter or select. Mark, I think they're gonna, yeah, filter and select, I think are aliases for each other. And here what we wanna do is we wanna say something like mark.fetch context annotations um, dot any. So if any context annotation matches the folder key. So if params folder, so only if there's a folder query string variable do we wanna filter down. And we're gonna filter down by saying any of the annotations match the key or like context annotation key for CA is equal to params folder. Whew. All right, so, okay, now it's filtering down. So if we look at, show me the bookmarks about meals or show me the bookmarks about government education. Show me the bookmarks about, I think it's the same one, yeah, enterprise software. All right, Trixie Mattel. Sweet, okay, so we have built out a tool. Uh, I guess I, I also want like a little bit more space under uh, bookmarks here, so let's go back to our, um, I guess, yeah, I could probably wrap this whole thing in a div just to give it, it's kind of its own little component. So we'll say, I don't know, PT8 again, keep it all consistent, nice. All right, I like it, I like it, okay. Um, yeah, so now we have like a fully working app using the Twitter V2 API for filtering our bookmarks using the context annotations from Twitter. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate your time and attention. Hopefully this was useful. Um, this was kind of a fun little um, exercise in munging the data that we get back from the Twitter API. In the next episode, um, we'll, we'll throw a payment front end on this. We always gotta have payments, right? So let's add a little payments front end for anyone who's logged in. We're gonna use Stripe to uh, collect payment for our brand new bookmarks software as a service and um, we'll uh, allow people to buy it for, I don't know, some amount per month and then we'll have some billing management, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but now people can sign up and they can manage their bookmarks. So excited, uh, excited that we made it this far. Thanks again and we'll see you in the next one.